Hey everyone, I'm Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to set up the DJI Iris 3 Pro Combo. So no matter what model you have, the first part of this video we're going to look at setting up the basic Iris 3 gimbal. Uh, we're going to learn how to balance it and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach the DJI transmission which is the Raven Eye. Then I'm also going to show you how to attach the mechanical zoom. We're going to do the briefcase mode and we're going to activate it and do all of that stuff. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, chapter increments in there so you guys can jump to the parts that you need to watch or rewatch later on to help you set this up. I bought this with my own money. It's not sponsored or anything by DJI, so it's completely independent. Uh, you can support me by hitting the subscribe button and turning on notifications. The cameras I'm using today are going to be the Sony A7S III and I'm going to put a heavy lens on here, which is the 2470 F2.8 G Master lens. And I will be showing the exact menu settings on the Sony A7S III. And I'll also mention the settings that we can use for something like, say, a Canon 5D Mark IV. So just kind of with that, you can improvise a little bit for your particular camera. Okay, the first part to setting up this gimbal is getting yourself a good base. So we're going to take the tripod. This just kind of unfolds and we're going to drop that down. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the battery grip. If you haven't charged it, make sure you just pop open the side here. Put that on USB-C and fully charge it before you start. Of course, once it's installed, you can just plug it into USB-C and charge it with everything set up. All right, so we're just going to screw this into the top. Just quickly make sure it's nice and firm. Great. Next thing, we're going to take the gimbal and then we are just going to pop this on the top. You'll see, you know, it basically goes one way. You see the metal contacts, the metal contacts. Try not to touch those with your fingers. Uh, the previous version I had had a rubber cover on this. This one did not come with a rubber cover. I don't know if they forgot to put it in my box or they're just not doing that anymore. But just seat it down. Should be nicely seated. Then we're just going to take that lock and pull it over. Make sure it's nice and secure. All right, let's just make this a little bit easier for setting up. So what we're going to do is we are going to unlock this motor here. And then we're just going to pull that up and then lock it into position. Then we're going to unlock this and then just kind of snap it into position. So this is our tilt motor. This is our roll motor. And this is our your our, our panning motor. All right, so what we want to do now is we are going to take the base plate and we want to attach the base plate. Now, this back part here is where the camera goes. See with the button? So make sure that's pointing towards you. And then what we're going to do is put it on the front of the stand here and then we just push it back. Now, when it starts to grip in here, just turn this little wheel and we'll pull it back about halfway. And then we're just going to lock that into position. All right, so that's our base. All right, let's get our camera ready. So we want to take the camera. What you want to look for is you'll see this little base plate and you'll see a little wing nut there inside the plastic bag. So let me just pop this through and first thing you do is you want to screw this in here. All right, so now we want to take this and we want to set it horizontal so it goes sideways. And it doesn't matter which side we put it on, there's holes in there for attaching the mechanical zoom and that will actually, doesn't matter. It's bi-directional so you can put it either way. All right, lock that in. Make sure it's nice and tight because you don't want to have that coming loose um, while you've got everything set up. That could be a real pain. All right, as far as setting up the camera now, it's very easy to attach the camera. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna take it to the side and then we just slide it in and you'll hear it snap and then just lock on the back here. So there's our lock. And if you want to take it off, you just take that, slide it, and then hit the little button. The nice thing about this is once you've set up and balanced your gimbal, with this quick release plate, you don't have to rebalance it every time. We just simply put it in here, slide it in, lock it in, and it should maintain the balance. One thing to bear in mind when you set up this camera, make sure you've got a fully charged battery in there. Make sure you've got a card in there. So if you're going to be filters or anything like that, put them on. If you're using a zoom lens, make sure you set it to the focal length. Because when you change any of that, it's going to change the balance of the camera. So make sure everything is on there before you balance it. That will save you some time. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to unlock the tilt motor. And we're going to pull this back. 
So let's get our camera positioning on here. So we're going to point the camera directly up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loosen off this here. And then we're just going to slide this up and down until we get a nice balance where it doesn't move anymore. And here's a little tip. If you struggle with that, just kind of lift the camera a little bit so it's not putting so much tension on it. There we go. That's nicely balanced and let's tighten that up. All right, let's roll it back. Now, with this still unlocked on this tilt motor, what we're going to do is we're going to take the side here, loosen that, and now we're going to use this little tension wheel. Now, one of the things you're going to find sometimes when you do it, and it gets quite there, and it's going to kind of, sometimes it'll run away, you see, like that? So what you want to do is don't loosen it all the way off. Keep just a little bit of tension there. And now we can adjust this and we can get a nice balance without it rolling away from us. Um, and that's looking pretty good. So what you're looking for is to be able to tilt it without the camera moving. And that's good. Let's lock that in. Let's do our roll. So we're going to unlock our roll. And then we're going to loosen this off. And once again, just find that nice balance. Okay, let's lock that in, tighten it up, and we're going to lock it in. All right, the next thing we got to do is we're going to loosen off our pan motor. Unlock it, loosen that, and now we're looking for this. Okay, let's just slide this backwards and forwards until we get a nice balance. looks pretty good and we're gonna lock that and how do you know you have a perfectly balanced gimbal because you can put the camera in any position and it's gonna stay still it's not gonna roll to the middle you don't want it to roll to the middle you want it to just stay put wherever you put it if you hear noises that are like brrr, or you feel it vibrating or shaking um, then you want to make sure that you properly balance it. Now there's one last step that we do when it's balanced and that's hitting the auto tune. So on the menu you'll see a little button here that's the auto tune. We tap on there and start calibration. Now it's not going to sing a pop song but it is going to make this weird scratchy noise while it's auto tuning and it's just going to just give it that little fine tune to really get a nice balance. And it's finished calibrating and it shows it's complete. So now we're ready to go. All right, let's power on the gimbal and activate it. So we wanna hit the power button. And then you'll see the language, select your language. And now we need to activate it. There's a QR code that you can use here with your phone and you can grab the app. So you wanna download that app. That's the DJI Ronin app. And you can start it up and use it five times without activating it, but then after that, it's going to force you to activate. So we're going to activate this now. Okay, so what we want to do is start up the DJI Ronin app. Okay, so the first time we connect it, we want to choose Connect. And then we're going to grab the RS3. Password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're going to choose Connect. And agree and activate. Now you log in to your DJI account and activation is complete. All right, let's set up remote shooting with Bluetooth. We can start and stop the video and we can also take photographs uh, just using the buttons on the gimbal. Now that's not compatible with all cameras and there's more functionality that we're gonna look at in a second with the cables, but for this basic functionality, it can work really well for a lot of people. Uh, the DJI website has a list of compatible cameras. I know the Sony A7S III is compatible uh, and some of the other ones, so check it out. If you have an older camera such as the Canon 5D Mark IV, that is not going to work because there's no Bluetooth on this camera. We're going to have to do it with a cable, which we'll do in a second. So let's set this up. So turn on the camera. Now what we do is we go into the menu on the Ronin. And what we're going to do is swipe down and then you'll see Bluetooth. Tap on the Bluetooth. Now it tells you you want to turn on Bluetooth on the camera. So we're going to hit menu. I'm on the Sony A7S III. And then what we're going to do is go down to 
this area here with the network settings. We're going to go down to Bluetooth and we're going to go to Bluetooth function, turn it on. Let's go to pairing. And this one's previously paired, but if it hadn't, it's going to give a number and then you're just going to hit the confirm. And then we're going to confirm on the gimbal. And you'll see there it says the name of the camera. And we are now good to go. If I hit the button, it starts recording, finishes recording. All right, let's set it up so we can take photographs with the M button. You're just going to swipe up a couple of times and then we see these settings here of dial functions swipe across and you'll see m button tap on m button and you'll see that if you're using the lidar we can go lidar a and manual or autofocus um, we don't have the lidar on here so it, which does not come with the bundle it's sold separately so we're going to click on take photos and then go away now if we hit the m button boom it's going to take a photograph. Now you can't be in movie mode, of course, you have to be into a different mode here, a camera mode, and then I hit the M button, takes a photo, great. So that's a nice functionality. Um, this is great for a very, very quick setup because that means I can just turn this on, it will lock and unlock the axes very quickly so we can get up and running and start shooting and this is going to work for a lot of cases. But if you want more control, we can control the ISO, the aperture, the shutter speed, and also we can go into manual focus and we can change the electronic focus through the cable. So what we're going to do is we are going to be using the USB-C cable here. So let me just power down the camera, power down the gimbal, or you could put it into sleep if you want. That's, that's fine either way. By the way, it's normal for it to kind of close here. That's because what if you have the arm extended for a heavier camera, so it doesn't want it colliding. So we can unlock that and then relock it and just snap it in position if you want. In this case, I'm just going to pop it open here and here just to get it where I want. Okay, I'm going to take the USB, included USB cable. Now you have the ability to use a multi or a USB-C. Uh, on the Sony camera, the USB-C is actually going to give you more controls than what you're going to get on the multi. So what we want to do is just attach it there. Then we're going to put this under the camera so it's not dangling everywhere. If you look on the tilt motor, you're gonna see this three little USB-C slots. So the top one is gonna be for your camera control. The bottom one's gonna be for Raven and I, we'll do that in a second, that's communication. And then the middle one is gonna be used for the mechanical zoom. So we're connecting it to the top one. We're all set to go. Now, if you're using a Canon 5D Mark IV, or some other older camera, what you've got to do is you've got to attach the micro USB to the USB-C. Now, the micro doesn't come with this, so you'll have to find a cable. Uh, that I'm using the one from the Iris 2, and it'll fit in here. Now, it's not a wide cable, but it doesn't actually have to go the whole width of those two little bits there. All it has to do is just pop into one of these, one half of that slot, and that's actually how it's supposed to work. And then you're gonna have control over the shutter speed, ISO, aperture on here. And of course there's many different cameras, so you're gonna have to look up the settings whether or not your camera is compatible, um, and that's on the DJI side. But this is basically um, how you set up most cameras, like here. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set up the settings. So let's open up the Sony camera, because the settings can be a little tricky on Sony. All right, so if we're gonna be using this cable, the first thing we need to do is go under the Bluetooth and turn it off. You can't have the Bluetooth working and using the cable at the same time. Now what you want to do is go up to transfer remote and then you'll see an option here that says PC remote function. Click on that and you're going to want to turn it on. Now PC remote connection you're going to see USB. All right we turn power on the gimbal and remote shooting should work. Great, that's working through the cable. Now if we scroll the wheel here, we can set this up to do different things. All right, so what we wanna do is just swipe up and then we're looking for dial functions. So under the dial functions, we could change it to focus, zoom. Now there's one last thing you need to do if you wanna use the focus. 
set the lens to autofocus and then in the camera you actually want to go through and set manual focus on the camera and then this should work now if you're using the canon what you want to do is once again make sure you're in autofocus on here and in the auto servo uh, turn that off and make sure that you're using manual focus internal autofocus on the lens and then this wheel here will enable us to do manual focus works quite nicely all right so we can also change here we can select iso if we want it and this will change my iso we can hit aperture change this with the wheel shutter and we can also use the wheel if we want to control the gimbal we can do things like roll pan and tilt so we have we have the options of doing that now i don't really probably use that for that i prefer to go in here and just kind of use it that way and just double click will recenter that gimbal maybe we want to do a little bit more maybe we want to transmit the video image to our mobile phone as well as have control we can do things like force feedback we can do things like facial tracking uh, we can change the settings on the camera we have a lot of control here let's set it up what we need it to do is use the ronin image transmitter is what they call it now but it's it's the raven eye it's exactly the same as the raven eye on the two and it even says raven eye on there so they changed the name but it's it's still the raven eye all right now you could mount this on the shoe on the camera but you don't want to do that in a gimbal because it's going to make it top heavy there's actually a place under here that you can but i just want to mention you can use a raven eye directly with the camera without the gimbal if you attach it here and then put the cable the control cable here you can actually use this for remote control of your camera all right but we're going to be using it on the on the rs3 obviously okay so let's tilt this up and then if you look on underneath here you'll see there's a little slot there's a big hole and then it kind of goes smaller this fits in here let me fold the antenna out because one of the things that's important is you don't want the antenna crashing into the gimbal so make sure the antenna is pointing away from everything and then it's just a matter of just putting it under there you'll see that little hole there slide it but make sure you slide it all the way and you'll feel it click it can feel like it's in there but it's not really locked in here you want to hear that click and a quick word about the antenna um, you know for close range work you probably don't need to extend the antenna but what you want to do though is for more signal is take these out but then take one of them and have it going at 90 degrees because what happens is the signal actually hits the flat part it doesn't hit the end of these and then if you have the flat parts going like this you've got a much better chance of getting a signal um, and not having any dropouts all right great so what we want to do now is we want to attach this so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take another USB-C cable so I'm actually going to use the one with the little tilt here on it so what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we are going to drop it in right there snap that in other end and I'm gonna take this other end and I'm gonna attach it to the bottom one all right there's another cable we want to attach to get the video and that's the HDMI so it comes with several different HDMI ones but the one I'm using here has a small HDMI to a full size which is gonna work on the Sony a7s3 grab the right one for your camera so take the HDMI here and you're gonna attach it to the back of the Raven eye or the image transmitter whatever they choose to call it pop open this here and then let's attach the HDMI into the camera all right everything is physically set up now before we go ahead and do anything else because we're actually going to connect this and get it going but now this has changed the balance of the camera so what we need to do is rebalance the gimbal if you were going to be setting it up with this and of course attaching any other things you would balance at the end make sure you get everything on that you want before you balance the camera so it's the same process that we did before for balancing let's go ahead and do it now just really quickly great all right let's uh do the auto tune again turn it back on so if you look at the back here of the raven eye you're going to see an on off switch right now you see these white lights going backwards and forwards that just means it's charging from this power cable and that because that's the power and communication cable 
Um, that's what that USB does. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tap and hold it here until it's on. It's going to go red and then it's going to turn blue. Once it turns blue, we're going to go into the app. Okay, so make sure that at this point, Bluetooth is on and Wi-Fi is on. Then we're going to choose connect. We're going to connect to our RS3. And okay, so click OK. Now what we're going to do is under the settings here, we're going to turn Bluetooth off. You do not want Bluetooth on with the Raven Eye because it will cause interference. We're hitting the Wi-Fi. And then we're looking for Raven Eye. So we see Raven Eye right there. It's going to ask for a password. The password by default is 12345678. Uh, some of the Raven Eyes, if you look there, it'll show the password written on it. And the other option is you can reset that password if you tap the on off switch six times. After the six times, it goes back to that default 12345678. And you can change that password for whatever you want. Raven Eye is connected. Let's go back to the DJI app and it will pop open. So let's tap on the settings here and then we can enable Force, Force Mobile. So with Force Mobile, if I move my phone up and down, look at this, it'll follow the phone, it'll mimic it. And you can change the speed, you can make it faster or slower. Do you like this? Yes, yes I do. Okay, great, what do you think? Nah. Yeah, so anyway, so that's nice. All right, and then the other thing, we're actually seeing what the camera's seeing. Let me triple click on the trigger here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna flip the camera around. Now I can see myself. Now, if I wanna track myself, all I do is just draw a little box around myself with the active track. And as I move, the camera is now gonna move and it's gonna track me and follow me. That's with active track on. Now there's other things we can do here. We can change you know, the settings on the camera, the f-stop, aperture, ISO, and I can go in joystick mode. There's a lot of different things that I can do with the app. Next thing we're gonna set up is the mechanical focus. So a lot of lenses are gonna work with this, but if you use the mechanical focus, you can focus any lens that so works with primes or any different type of lenses. So let's just put this into sleep mode and we're gonna set this up right now. So I'm gonna move this side on. And just so you guys can see, I'm just gonna unplug these cables just for now. And then of course we'll plug those back in. All right. So what we wanna do is we wanna attach it. So we're gonna start with this part. Now they say, you know, you take it off and you put it on the plate. You could do that, but you can attach it without dismounting the camera. Um, all we're do doing is we're just taking this little thing here and we're putting it in there and then we can just tighten it up. It probably is easier to take the camera off and you could probably tighten that, you know, that nut a little bit tighter, but once again, not necessary. All right, now we're gonna take the bar and I wanna make this bar fit in here. So we loosen off this little thing here and then we're just gonna slide, we're just gonna slide this. Now I want it to be about flush with the front of the lens. That should be enough. And then we're gonna tighten this up and now that's on there. Now there's another piece that we could use earlier on. You don't have to use with this. You can use it at any time. And that's this little support. So if you're using a heavier lens, take the little plastic Y looking thing and then the screw with the little plastic wing nut kind of thing on it. And then we attach this on the front. So if we put this on the front, find the middle screw, make sure we're pushing up to support the lens, tighten it up. And now that's gonna give you some stability. If you're gonna be using the mechanical focus, I would definitely recommend using this bar. And by the way, yes, the mechanical focus will also work on Zoom, because I had a lot of people asking me that on the previous version. This new motor is apparently three times more powerful. So yes, it can do Zoom or focus, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, now what we wanna do is we wanna take this thing that looks like a, I don't know, an oil filter changer. It's a little thing like, you know, it's got little, like a tank tracks and what we're going to do is let's do the focus so we're going to take this and make sure that this little bit that sticks out is away from this side so we we definitely want it out of the way and then you're going to pull it tight make sure it's nice and tight and you're just going to kind of lock it in now make sure this is perfectly centered you want to have it just nice and even all the way around 
because if it's not, you're going to run into problems. Um, all right. It's funny, all the uh, gimbal companies use these, but they don't feel like the most elegant solution, but that's, that's what we have. All right. And so that should be nice and tight and nice and even. And once again, make sure that the front of this thing is out of the way of everything. All right, I'm just going to reconnect the rest of these cables really quickly. Now, we're going to take the motor itself. So what we're going to do with the motor, with the DJI pointing towards you, we're just going to slide it in here. And then we're going to line it up with this little thing. So the gears in the top here are actually going to work with the little gears on the lens. So make sure it's perfectly aligned and make sure that it's in there nicely and then tighten that up. Just test it by just rolling your finger on it, making sure that's controlling it. Yep, that's looking good. It's working good. You want to make sure that's working correctly before you attach the motor. All right, now we're going to power up the motor. What we're going to do is take this USB-C. I notice there's two USB-C slots. Um, it works on either of them, and I didn't notice a difference in power using either one. Maybe, maybe there is. I didn't notice it. Um, so either one will work. And then we're going to attach this to our USB-C on our roll arm. We're going to the middle one. All right. Go out of sleep, turn the camera on. It's not working yet. What we've got to do is go into the controls. So we're going to swipe up and then go to dial functions. And at the very top, you'll see focus motor. And now if I turn this on the gimbal, look at this, I can do manual focus. So for zoom, all we've got to do is just loosen off this motor. It'll just pop down, loosen off this oil filter thing. Actually, we're going to need to take it off because we need to feed it under the camera because we've got that lens support in the front. And now we're just going to take that, make sure it's in the middle, snap it into position. And by the way, this gets easier with practice. The first couple of times you do this, it might seem a little overwhelming, but it really, I can do this in just a few minutes. Obviously it's taking longer because I'm creating a tutorial. A couple of things to bear in mind if you do want to use the zoom. One, if you've got a zoom lens like this and it doesn't have an internal zoom, it will change the balance. So zooming in and out is not necessarily going to be a good idea if you want to keep a well-balanced gimbal. If that's something you might be doing, set the lens to about the middle, balance it there, and maybe you'll get away with a little bit on either side, but just be aware of that. And another thing, it does take a lot more pressure and a lot more power here to be doing the zoom. All right, so we're just going to slide this motor in here into the middle. Make sure that's locked in, get it nice and tight there. Turn everything back on. And you don't have to change the settings because we already have the wheels set. Okay, everything's on. And notice now we can zoom. And the other thing you can do too is you can also use that on the aperture. If you have an aperture ring, you could also attach that on there and use it there too. Two more things. Let's do briefcase mode, which is really quite useful. Um, so you'll have this little handle. So you're just gonna pop this handle open and then you'll see these connectors on either side. So decide which side you wanna put this on and just simply slide it down tighten it up. Now what I'm going to do with this particular one here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull it up a little bit like this. And so this is nice because what it's going to do is it's going to enable you to use the camera in an underslung mode as well as a two-handed operation so you're not putting all your strain on one hand and obviously the less strain you're putting on here the smoother the movements you're going to get. So I do like these kind of handles. So let's get everything back on again we can use it like this, which is actually a way I actually like to shoot like this. And look at this, you can do it with one hand and then just use the other hand to just kind of guide and stabilize. One other thing that we can mount on here, just a cold shoe mount here, is the phone holder. So this will go on the other side because there's two of these. So all we need to do is just slide that down. Okay, that's nice. It's in position, we can snap our phone in. And that's how that works. And of course, you can just snap that into horizontal or vertical position. All right, so that's how we set up everything inside the DJI RS3 Pro bundle. Now, let me know in the comments underneath um, if you found this useful 
And if you have any questions or anything like that, you know, just get a discussion going down there and do me a big favor, um, put a lot of work into this. If you hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, you won't miss any of my videos. And also hit that thumbs up, that's the like button. Thanks guys, and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.